Greetings everyone, and welcome back after a couple month hiatus to the return of the Daily Dizzle. It's Monday, May 7th, 2012. Tommy Dizzlemits himself, Tom Denardi. You do not like that nickname. You do not have to be watching. So uh, just take that into consideration. Uh, sometimes work just tends to get in the way of me wanting to dick around and do the things I'm entertained by. Um, and if I can't do the things I want to do to the best of my ability, then I'm usually just going to be like, fuck it for a while. So uh, that's why we had a break. I'm not going to bring my A game. No point in bringing any kind of game. Um, so today we're just going to kind of streamline it, try and get back into the rhythm of things. I'm honestly going to hate calling this the Daily Dizzle for this week until I can at least get back into the rhythm. So uh, bear with us. It might take a bit, but uh, we'll get there. In case this is your first time joining us, um, what we like to do is just bring up some of the latest entertainment news and kind of streamline it and uh, make it easily digestible for you guys. So we're going to jump right in um, with the weekend box office. This is one of our big points that we like to cover. Um, we're not going to be talking about any other movies, uh, none of the ones that came out last weekend that all dropped over 50% in their second weekend, which means they're not going to be hanging around that long. Instead, we're going to just talk about the huge story, obviously. Marvel's The Avengers has set a new benchmark record for an opening weekend. It had a pretty decent midnight launch, actually beating out The Dark Knight by just a smidgen to claim the superhero midnight opening record. It did not claim opening day record. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 still holds on to that. But by the end of the weekend, Avengers was able to come back, steal the weekend record, stole the Saturday and Sunday single day record grosses, which is an amazing feat. Not only that, it also set a new sprint record, reaching $100 million, $150 million, and $200 million in the quickest time possible. Um, when new movies come out, they break it down by roughly what point in the day it would have crossed the mark. And uh, obviously, it has quickly beat out every other movie on record so far. In fact, it's actually outgrossed all of the other Avenger movies on the American side of things, with the exception of Iron Man 1 and 2, which both made over $300 million. But right now, Avengers is on pace for at least $400 million, and it could be the first superhero movie since The Dark Knight to actually cross $500 million. Now, speaking of Batman, with The Dark Knight Rises coming out later this summer, uh, despite the fact that DC and Marvel are rival companies, it was a no-brainer that with one of the biggest epic superhero events of the summer, you might as well throw the other one in that. Warner Brothers ended up able to attach the trailer, the last Batman trailer ever for Christopher Nolan's Batman trilogy. They put it ahead of Marvel Avengers that obviously had to lead to some enhanced ticket sales. Um, it's been online for the last week or two, um, but we're going to wait until later in the week because I haven't seen the Avengers yet, and uh, honestly, with something as epic as the last Batman movie, the last time that we're ever going to get something this big, I'm sure there will be other Batman movies that will be awesome, but no one does movies like Christopher Nolan. I'm saving this one for the big screen experience. So now that the summer box office season has started in full force, that has led to some of the other big movies for the season also putting out their own previews. The Expendables was an okay movie, but didn't get the greatest reviews in the world. It did make over $100 million, but some of the novelty might have already worn off. That's why they brought in Chuck Norris and John claude Van Damme for the next one. Hopefully that's going to be enough to counteract the bad publicity in the last year of all the people who did like the first one and the fact that it was over the top and violent. And then the fact that they heard, wait, the second one's going to be PG-13. How the hell are you going to even match what the first one did when you're cutting down the rating like that? So uh, it's up in the air if everyone's going to return or if some people think that it's going the live free or die hard route. Which I think is an unfair comparison because live free or die hard, even when it was PG-13, was probably one of the better die hard movies, if you don't agree go to hell. Before we wrap up today, let's jump in with a little bit of TV news. Uh, we're never good about covering TV. Just simply put, I live about three weeks behind in my DVR, so uh, never really good for being a timely reporter when it comes to television. However, with the season finale of Castle coming up tomorrow, I, I gotta talk about it. It's the one show that I actually manage to keep up on every single week. Nathan Fillion is the man he's just got the goofiness and the charm, and, and damn it, he's so dreamy. And that is what the charm of Castle is. It doesn't matter that it's been going for how many seasons, and oh, will they hook up, won't they hook up? That's been pretty much the whole story. I, I think it's been good. 
However, if you've been following that story, this season has definitely been one of the rockiest. Like, literally, I found myself halfway through episodes being like, Oh my god, yes, 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 they're going somewhere. And by the end of the episode, being like, Damn it, no! So it's definitely one of the most engaging seasons. Doesn't mean it's not upsetting for some episodes. Uh, but recently, TV.com did a breakdown of the best and the worst episodes of the season. So um, if you haven't been able to catch them all, if you just want to see what someone else's opinions on this season were uh, while you're waiting around for the season finale tonight, go ahead and check the link in the description. That will do it for my time today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, if you watched before, thanks for joining up with us again. If this is your first time, hopefully we've done enough to convince you uh, uh, that this isn't the biggest waste of five plus minutes every day. Um, don't forget to check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash dizzlemits, twitter.com slash dizzlemits, uh, dizzlemits. Just remember, dizzlemits. So yeah, that's all the time we've got for today. We thank you guys for joining us here as always. Be sure to check back tomorrow where you can get more of your Dizzle Daily. The Daily Dizzle on Tommy Dizzle Mitz. We'll see you guys then.